There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Bookmania. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Try a Chapter tag. This was a tag originally created by Book Paradise. I will put a link to that original tag video in the show notes. And this is my second go around with the Try a Chapter tag. I, last time I did it in July of 2018, I subtitled it the Book on Haul version. The purpose being to weed out through my collection, but I think that's usually the purpose of it. So I'm not going to add the subtitle. It's just the try a chapter tag in which I'm going to try a chapter from four books. And I will decide if any of them are deeply uninteresting to me and I will get rid of them. But the other ones I might move up farther to the top of my TBR. Now this is a nice complement to uh, another tag or another series of videos that I just launched a few weeks ago called Massaging My TBR and that in that one I go to and reacquaint myself with books that are on my Goodreads TBR books that I don't actually own yet but that I add and I add several books a day and have been doing that for years so I have no idea what's there so I reacquaint myself with a few books and move those ones up closer to the top of my TBR but I also have hundreds of books on my shelves that I have no idea whether I will ever get around to reading and have forgotten all about or why I bought them or whatever. And so this tag is very useful for that. So let me show you the four books that I'm going to try a chapter from. The first one is called The Last Policeman by Ben H. Winters. And this is a novel from the UK, I'm pretty sure. but I... No. It is an American novel. Ben Winters lives in Indian Indianapolis. I think I heard either Simon or Thomas talk about this on the the Reader's Podcast years ago, and that's why I acquired it. There is a asteroid heading towards Earth. All life on planet Earth will be destroyed in a matter of six months. And a police detective wonders what's the point of solving murders between now and then. So it's not a genre mystery, because I hate... Oh, it's the first in a trilogy. But it's... Well, maybe it is a mystery. A mystery set on the brink of an apocalypse. I, don't, I hate mysteries. I'm not a big fan of dystopic fiction, but this one might just be the sweet spot between them. I don't know. So I'm really curious. I'd forgotten what it was about, and I remember now. So I am going to try a chap, obviously. A 2012 novel, by the way. Next is a novel from South Africa, Bitter Fruit by Ahmad Dangor. Ahmad Dangor is a South African of Indian descent. He was deeply involved in the anti-apartheid politics and more recently has uh, chaired the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund or the Children's Charity. Uh, and according to the, to the flap here, he now lives in Geneva. I can't remember what I've heard. I just remember that what I have heard about this was fairly mixed. I'm deeply interested in South African literature. Oh, well, it was a finalist for the Booker and the Impact Dublin Literary Award, so it can't be. Well, uh, no, never mind. <laughs> I can say it can't be trash, but I uh, know that's not true. The main character seems to be a man named Silas Alley, and he has encountered a Afrikaner lieutenant, Dubois. And the last time that he met Dubois was when Dubois was torturing his wife because of his Silas Alley's political work within the ANC uh, during the, the apartheid era, and so then they meet again. Beyond that, I don't need to know much more. I just want to read the first chapter and let you know. Lovely cover. 2001 novel. I keep forgetting the publication date, so let's start with that. This is an originally published in uh, French, I believe French, let's see, yeah, in 1929, but this is a 2007 English edition of David Golder by Irene Nemirovsky. She is most famous, of course, for Sweet Francaise, which I have not read. This is another of her novels. And this is, I've, I know this has come up in different tag videos I've done before. I think I hauled it, actually. This is her second novel. This is the one that made her famous in France, apparently. And she died at Auschwitz. And it is about a, a man, David Golder, a Jewish man in France, I'm pretty sure. Born in poverty, who becomes a rich gold and oil tycoon. Not so sure about this one. Haven't read anything by her. I'm 
That's why I'm including it in this tag. And the last one I'm going to try a chapter from is a Rose Tremaine novel, Music and Silence. This is a fairly well-known novel by her, and I, the only thing I've read by her, and she's the only one of these three writers that I've read anything by, was <laughs> a novel from a couple of years ago. What the hell was it called? It was called the Gustav Sonata, and I loved it. It was a five-star read, I think so. Yeah, five-star read. And that one was just published a couple years ago. This one is an earlier one. This one is a historical novel. I guess that one was too. It was set. Part of the story was set in World War II. But, uh, two. but this one, uh, 1999. And this is a very historical novel set in the year 1629. And it's about a young English lutenist who arrives at the Danish court to join King Christian IV's Royal Orchestra. The story goes from there. I'm not big into reading about music, but my favorite novel... Do not say we have nothing by Madeleine Tien was very much about music, so it made me interested to read more music-themed novels. And I loved her other novel, the Gustav Sonata, so I'm going to give this one a try. I'm not as big into historical fiction as... Well, in my own mind, I have a distinction between the genre historical fiction, which a lot of it I have a prejudice that it's just like other genres. It's not literary enough for my taste. And then there's literary fiction, which happens to be set back in history, a la Hilary Mantel, the Cromwell series. You know, that's a that's literary fiction that happened that's set in history. It's not historical fiction in the way that I consider historical fiction to be. And I don't mean Mel. I don't mean to poo-poo historical fiction, the genre, but it, I'm not sure that uh, I'm not. I don't care if the story's set back in history or not. I just want it to be very literary, literarily satisfying. The other novel I read by Tremaine was, so I'm hoping this will be too. This one is one of her most talked about novels, I think. And I'm going to preview it, and I very tentatively, very tentatively, talked with Robert of Barter Hordes about reading this, and Robert of Barter Hordes and I have yet to do a buddy read, so if I like this chapter, I'm going to push those discussions a little farther. So that is the fourth book that I will be trying a chapter from. I will report back in probably a day or so. Hey, so it's the next day, and I have read the first chapter of The Last Policeman by Ben Winters, and I'm worried it's going to be a bail. I'm not worried. I think it's quite possibly going to be a bail, but I still want to try it. In other words, the first chapter didn't turn me off to the point where I'm going to toss it aside. It is a mystery story, but the fact that it's set in this unique circumstance, I'm more curious about all of the socio-psychological ramifications of this asteroid coming towards Earth in six months than I am solving the mystery, but even the mystery is more interesting to me because it's in that context. And the writing is quite smart. I see things that are making me cringe because it's just the way that, what's the adjective? Hard-boiled mystery stuff it just makes my skin crawl, but I'm going to hold my nose about that and just keep reading not now but you know I will I will definitely try this and if any of you have and especially if you're not a big mystery f fan like I'm not please give me your advice but this one I am NOT on hauling I'm gonna give it an honest try yeah quite quite impressed hey guys well this tags working well this time around this is a stinker <laughs> literally bitter fruit by Ahmad Dangor yeah it was awful I, I read 10 pages, and the protagonist farted twice. Once on page 1, and once on maybe page 9. And it was described in really florid detail. It's an interesting story. It's about a man, probably an Indian, South African man, with post-traumatic stress in the early post-apartheid era. He runs into one of his torturers or cap uh, police people, policemen, guys that had given him some grief years ago in this supermarket. Now, that sounds so compelling, but it just, it was a story. It was not, it was not literature. Just the opening paragraph, before we get to the first big juicy fart, is just talking about politics and the psychodynamics of recovering from torture in such a straightforward way like you would read in a psychology textbook. Good men had done all kinds of things they could not help doing because they had been corrupted by all the power someone or something had given them. That's the last sentence in the first paragraph. I mean, it's true or it's interesting, but 
I don't want to read a novel that starts that way. Show me. Don't give me something out of a p political psychology trauma recovery textbook. No, that's not literature. And he farted twice in my face as I was reading the book, so no thank you. And this is going out of my library. Hey, well, I had grand designs of doing some outdoor filming or even just setting the camera up in a different place in my apartment, and I've just been defeated by uh, running out of time and bad weather outdoors. So here I go in the same position, but at least with a different shirt. It's two days later, I think. Talk about this book, David Golter by Irene Nemirovsky. Let's just look at the first paragraph or so together, shall we? No, said Golder, tilting his desk lamp so that the light shone directly into the face of Simon Marcus, who was sitting opposite him on the other side of the table. For a moment, Golder observed the wrinkles and lines that furrowed Marcus's swarthy face whenever he moved his lips or closed his eyes, like the ripples on dark water when the wind blows across it. But his hooded eyes, with their oriental languor, remained calm, bored, and indifferent. A face as unyielding as a wall. Golder carefully lowered the lamp's flexible metal stem. Okay, so I didn't need to read much past that paragraph, and I'm sure some of you are wondering why. Because I, 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 this book's going in the garbage, or this book's, I'm getting rid of this book. I'm unhauling it based on the page and a half I read. And even though there's a couple things in this opening paragraph that I like, the simile, like the ripples on dark water when the wind blows across it. Uh, faces on yielding as a wall. That one's not bad, but the first one I quoted just now, I like. But I hate so much about this paragraph. I hate swarthy. I hate languor. Put it eyes. No, the, the writing is, I think, really subpar. And I'm sure there'll be many of, of you out there that this will be, you'll find it engaging and that's fine. But then I'm not gonna read it line by line. No, said Golder, and then every other direct quote on this page is a ridiculous, puke-worthy verb instead of say. It's, no, Golder murmured again. And then, blah, 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 he drawled. Going over onto the second page, blah, 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 he mumbled. It, that is the kind of writing that just, it's so deadening to me as a reader. Conversation? is about the Marcus wants to buy Golder's stock and Golder doesn't want to sell so yeah I mean I knew that this was about a speculator a golden oil speculator so that already I didn't think it was going to be for me but the, the really flat writing along with the, <laughs> they're talking about business I don't want to read fiction about business not unless there's really interesting characters and uh, maybe Golder will end up being interesting. I've seen on Goodreads that people say he's too, he's a very unlikable character and as long as he's interesting and as long as there's somebody in the novel for me to root for, I'm okay with that. But the writing really, really turns me off and or the translation. And unfortunately, I was going to say that hopefully Nemirovsky's Sweet Francaise had a different translator, but it doesn't. So, again, I don't know if it's the translation or what, but I just, the writing leaves me cold. So, this one is bye bye! Hey, well, today I previewed the first 20 pages, I think, maybe 18 pages, of Rose Tremaine's novel Music and Silence, and I already knew by about page 10 that I would definitely want to give this a try. I think I'm going to really like it, maybe even love it. It's slow moving, but builds a historical world. Denmark in the early 17th century, yep, 1629 in Copenhagen, and this British lutenist, Peter Clare, arrives. He's been hired by the Danish royal court to perform. And I thought the characters were really well drawn in the atmosphere when he walks into this really dark, dank palace after voyaging across the channel. The king, who I didn't know anything about, King Christian the, the Fourth, was a character, and I checked out his Wikipedia page, and then his, his concubine spouse, she was really interestingly sketched out. I read up into the point where 
the British guy, the British lutenist, Peter Clare, finds out from his orchestra members that, in fact, the orchestra performs in the basement, in the really cold, damp basement, and their music is piped all through the palace, but they are out of sight, and the working conditions because of that are horrible. And they said, sorry, we didn't tell you by post because we didn't think you'd come. And there's one other thing that I will talk about on a, in other words, video, because it was quite wonderful. Wool gathering is a piece of vocabulary that I've long known and vaguely been aware of the meaning, which is to kind of space out, lose yourself, daydream. And this novel gives a, an inaccurate but quite tantalizing historical basis for the use of that term which I went, then went to Google to check, and it's the only references I found to any kind of Danish historical <laughs> basis for that phrase. Wool gathering is fictional, and all the references trace to this novel. But I don't care about that. I think it's just part of the historical, fictional world-building that she's doing here. I am definitely going to try it. I think it's, I think it's going to be a good novel. It's a chunkster, and it's starting out, and it's... Grab is too strong of a word because it's just there's just kind of a sketching out the characters. The writing is good. It's slow moving, but there's a lot of room for more movement. And I also on the basis of how much I loved her more recent novel, the name of which always goes out of my head, but I've already mentioned earlier in this video. Uh, I'm going to give it a try, and I think it's going to be good. So this was a very successful uh, try a chapter tag video. I got rid of two and am quite eager to read the other two. How about you? Have you read any of these? Which ones would you be most likely to pick up? I guess this is a tag video, so I should tag some people. If you've never tried the try a chapter tag, why don't you try it? I'm going to tag Ollie Bliss. My lazy way of uh, choosing people to tag is just to go to my most recent comments and select a few that way. So Ollie Bliss. Uh, here's a new booktuber, Bookish Islander. I don't know if he would do this, but let's try it. Just one reader, Bookish, and Heidi of My Reading Life. Give this tag a try, please, if you haven't already done it. Well, even if you've done it, this is the thing that this is a tag that you can use over and over again with different books, right? Thanks for watching.